Hello, 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 Cancer. I'm Poetic Heretic, and this is your September 2020 astrology forecast, where we take a look at the most significant astrological developments of the month and interpret them for your sign. So we're doing things a little bit differently this month. Rather than my having a written report to read to you, I am instead interpreting each chart in real time, so that should be interesting. Also, I want to remind you, as always, that videos like this will be most accurate for your rising sign, so I recommend using them for your rising sign first and foremost, and then after that, if you would like to, you may also use them for your sun and or moon sign. So with that said, let us begin. So, the first chart that we're looking at here is actually for the very end of the month, and it is when the Mars-Saturn square perfects on September 29th at 5 p.m. And the reason that we have to look at this first is because everything else that happens in the month of September must be understood within the context of this. So you may recall from my forecast from last month that Mars is in an extended stay in Aries right now. And that is as a result of the retrograde period that it is about to have this month, that it is about to begin this month. And what's happening right now, in other words, at the beginning of September, is that Mars is slowing down as it prepares to station retrograde. And as it slows down and stations retrograde, it holds that same position there uh, right around the end of Aries from like 25 to 27 degrees of Aries. And as it holds this position, it does so in a square with Saturn, which is quite unusual and definitely not the easiest energy to work with. Um, so the chart that we have on screen, uh, yes, it's the 29th, but it's really not so much important when it is as this is just when the aspect happens to perfect. What is important is that this energy is with us for the entire month of September, this Mars square Saturn energy specifically as Mars uh, stations retrograde. So what does this mean for all of us? How is this going to manifest? Well, it manifests more than anything as frustration. It manifests as Mars and Aries wanting to push forward, take action, do it now, and Saturn and Capricorn is saying no, or you must go through this tedious process first, or you have to do it this specific way. Um, <clears throat> and it's just this, this great conflict between Mars that wants to go and Saturn that wants to stop. So this is our challenge right now to work with this energy. Now, for you specifically, Cancer, this is taking place in your 10th house of career and public image, as well as your 7th house of major relationships. And so, uh, first of all, before I fully delineate it, um, it needs to be emphasized that this is not going to have its outcome anytime soon. Uh, instead, we're going to continue to be in the thick of it for quite some time. Certainly all of this month, once September ends, this aspect does not end. However, it will eventually have its end uh, quite some time from now, and we'll get into that in future videos. But to, with that said, to delineate this aspect, uh, essentially we have a stressful event forming in the area of your career or public image and or your major relationships that is involving focused action, motivation, or desire, as well as authority, limitation, obstacles, or the facing of a difficult reality that is pushing you into new areas of activity. And those new areas of activity, as well as the areas most likely to end up being affected by this whole thing once it is finally done and over with are again your career or public image your creative self-expression your major relationships and or your business your partner's money or issues of life and death 
And so we do have uh, quite the dynamic areas that uh, are potentially involved with this uh, very powerful aspect. Now, understand also, of course, that um, the Mars-Saturn square itself is not the only part of this uh, larger story with Mars uh, extended stay in Aries because it also will eventually square Pluto and Jupiter again two more times for each of them and then finally Saturn again um, it stays in Aries and continues to uh, square Jupiter Pluto and Saturn for some time but then eventually moves into Taurus and basically without getting too complicated this all won't be over until uh, February of 2021. So January will be the last month that we see this and really see it conclude. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the specific house that Mars is in because I mentioned this last month, but it very much bears repeating here because it's very important. This area of your life, and for you, Cancer, it's your career and public image, is experiencing a highly unusual review and extra focus at this time. There is, there is the need to take more time, patience, and presence with this particular area of your life, your career and public image, your reputation, your standing in the community, the role that you've been assigned um, by your community, all of this stuff. It's experiencing... An unusual review and is indeed eventually going to prove itself to be a process of transformation for you. So uh, as is, well, basically everything in astrology. So know that that is what is happening here in the larger picture and also know that in the meantime, as we're all kind of going through this frustration, this desire to push forward, even though we also have to stop at the, feels like we have to stop at the same time, feels like we're trying to hit the gas and hit the brakes at the same time. Um, as we're all sort of dealing with this very difficult energy right now, uh, throughout the month of September, um, eventually it's going, it is going elsewhere, but in the meantime, this is like the background of the whole month of September and everything else we're going to go over in this video must be understood within that context. Now, with all of that said, the first major event that we're looking at this month is indeed the full moon on September 2nd. <coughs> Sorry, I had to cough. Uh, September 2nd at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time. And by the way, all times in this video are in Eastern Time, so adjust your time zone accordingly. Now, this full moon is in Pisces, and so first of all, we have this interesting dynamic between the earthy, practical Virgo energy as the sun makes its way through Virgo, um, as it always does this time of year, and the dreamy, mystical, mysterious energy of the moon in Pisces. So... On and around September 2nd, we're experiencing a bit of a break from the very logical, earthy, practical energy that we've been in for uh, about a week and a half now. And instead, we can let our minds wander and our imaginations kind of go a bit wild and things of this nature. Now, uh, the full moon in Pisces is also, of course, co-present with Neptune, the modern ruler of Pisces. And that is also just adding even more dreaminess and fantasy and all that is mysterious and non-physical and spiritual to the mix. In addition to that, the full moon is in a very close to exact sextile with Uranus in Taurus. And that is adding an element of excitement and unpredictability to this full moon. It is... Um, sort of filling the air with this electricity, this feeling of uh, we don't quite know what's coming next, and there's there's that which is new, there's innovation, there's something fresh, something perhaps even shocking or unexpected that is being added to the mix here. So for you specifically, Cancer, 
this full moon is taking place in your ninth house. And of course, the full moon is where things come to a head. And so you can expect things to come to a head in the area of your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. And so that is what we have with the full moon on September 2nd at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, later that same day, we have at 8.19 a.m. Eastern Time, Venus opposite Saturn. And so that creates an interesting contrast with the dreamy, mysterious Pisces full moon that we just went over because Venus opposite Saturn is a much more somber and serious vibe. And so what we have here for you specifically is someone or something challenging you in the area of you personally and or your major relationships that involves how you relate to others or authority or limitations, obstacles, or the facing of a difficult reality that may require you to make a choice and that ends up affecting your friends or social group, your home and family life, your major relationships, and or your business, your partner's money, or issues of life and death. So very interesting uh, scenario having Venus in your sign of Cancer uh, making this opposition to Saturn. It's something that I think uh, those of Cancerian energy are going to feel very deeply. And indeed, like I said, something taking place in the area of you personally very much applies. Now, this Venus-Saturn opposition is also square to Mars. Another way of looking at this is that Venus is activating that already existing square to Mars because that's the reality, of course, is Mars has been square to Saturn already. It's only September 2nd, but it's been square to Saturn for a good portion of August. And then Venus comes in here, forms an opposition to Saturn and a square to Mars itself as well and activates that. And so without getting lost in the details here, that's essentially adding another level of tension to the mix, the potential for anger, um, more obstacles, more frustration, wanting to take action but being unable to. And so it is a very difficult position for Venus. And it's, you know, it, it's unfortunate. But I guess the good news is that Venus will move into Leo not too long after this, just a number of days after this, about a week or so. I don't have the exact date in front of me, but um, <clears throat> no more than a week or so, I'm almost certain. And uh, we also, interestingly enough, have Mercury applying to a sextile to Venus and a trine to Saturn at the same time. And so I think uh, Mercury may be softening the hard edges of Saturn uh, at this time and during this transit as it maybe uh, provides an opening for resolution through communication, as that is what Mercury is, communication. Next, on September 11th at 4.20 p.m., we have the Sun opposite Neptune. So, first and foremost, similar to the uh, Pisces full moon, we have the contrast here be between the Sun in earthy practical Virgo and Neptune in dreamy, mysterious Pisces. So, that's one thing we can identify right off the bat, is that's getting activated again. Now, for you specifically, Cancer, uh, this is manifesting most likely as, again, someone or something challenging you in the area of your communication, short distance travel, or that which is familiar to you, and or your belief, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you that may require you to make a decision and that ends up affecting your money or self-image, as well as, again, your belief, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So that is one 
aspect of this development. Another aspect is the fact that the sun, as it is opposing Neptune, is also trining Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn. The, the Capricorn conglomeration is receiving powerful, a powerful trine, uh, or powerful trines, uh, I guess, depending on how you look at it, um, from the sun in Virgo. And so, and so lighting them up, uh, energizing them. And this essentially is a manifestation of breakthroughs, whether for good or ill. Trines facilitate speed. And so things happening very fast around uh, roughly the middle of the month. Remember, this is the trines are more of an ongoing thing. We're looking more specifically here at right when the sun opposes Neptune, but the trines are not all likely to manifest uh, that day, September 11th, when, when the sun opposes Neptune, but this is kind of more um, middle of the month in general sort of thing. Now, with the sun trine Jupiter, you could experience a breakthrough involving an expansion of your worldview or growth in some way. With the trine to Pluto, you could experience a breakthrough involving deep emotional experiences and or inner transformation. With the trine to Saturn, breakthroughs involving authority, limitation, obstacles, reality, maybe you get the approval of an authority figure or something like that. And again, this Capricorn stuff, <laughs> the Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn conglomeration is in your seventh house of major relationships. And so that is also uh, very likely to be a big part of what we see here uh, for you, Cancer. So very interesting stuff indeed. Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to mention with that? I think I mentioned that the sun here is involving or most likely representing like your ego or sense of self. And so the opposition to Neptune is is quite possibly you being challenged when it comes to your ego or sense of self. And then, of course, the Neptune element, which is fantasy or dreams or illusion or whatever. But if I didn't mention it, then uh, I just mentioned it now. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the new moon also in Virgo. On September 17th at 7 a.m. So the new moon is where the new beginning takes place each month. It is where the energy of the um, new lunar cycle, so the following month, um, begins to take place or it's like a seed that is planted. You could also say, and so starting September 17th, and then for a month after that, uh, this is a very big part of the flavor of that period of time. That lunar cycle has its roots here in the sign of Virgo. And again, it's a very earthy, practical, uh, analytical, uh, mental, but also tangible beginning of a new cycle that is made even more so the case when we observe that this new moon is in a powerful trine with Saturn. And it is less than a degree from exactitude, from being in as precise of a trine as it gets. And so Saturn, again, is about making things real. And so this new cycle that we're moving into is all about making things real and bringing things much more down to earth, I would say. And as always, trines are breakthroughs, and so there may be a breakthrough as well for many of us um, around that time. Now, for you specifically, Cancer, this new moon is taking place in the area of your third house, and so you can expect new beginnings in your communication, short-distance travel, or that which is familiar to you. And then the trine to Saturn, again, that's in Capricorn, your seventh house, perhaps some breakthroughs, maybe even some new beginnings involving your major relationships. And perhaps I should mention this more often, your major relationships, that doesn't have to mean just your romantic relationships, and it doesn't even have to mean even relationships with other humans. It can be a uh, 
relationship with your life purpose or with something that you've really dedicated yourself to. Um, it can be a relationship with some some project that you spend a lot of time with. Uh, I've seen it manifest that way many a time as well. And so I would say uh, just keep that in mind whenever your seventh house of major relationships is being activated. And also, of course, as I think is pointed out more frequently, uh, it, it can even involve relationships with those um, that you're not on positive terms with. In other words, uh, enemies, especially open enemies or public enemies. So I'm just wanting to uh, point that out there since that's getting hit pretty hard uh, for you guys right now. The final event we will look at for this month is on September 24th at 6.47 a.m. Eastern Time, Mercury opposes Mars. Now, I can tell you right off the bat, anytime we have Mercury in hard aspect to Mars, we're looking at the probability for arguments, conflicts, angry words, um, angry exchanges of information, and that applies to everyone. Now, for you specifically, Cancer, this Mercury-Mars opposition is most likely manifesting as someone or something challenging you in the area of your home and family and or your career or public image. And another way of looking at that is something challenging you in your public and or private life that requires you to make a decision and that involves communication or what you write, study, think, or talk about, as well as motivation, focused action, desire, or willpower. And that ends up affecting how you spend time alone or your enemies, your communication, short distance travel, or what is familiar to you, your career or public image, and or your creative self-expression. So that is one level of this aspect. Another level, if you notice, is that both Mercury and Mars are square to Saturn here. Or another way of looking at that, similar to what we saw earlier with Venus, is that Mars has been square to Saturn. Mars has been in that configuration for quite some time. Mercury comes swooping in here and activates that square triggers that square by forming an opposition to Mars and a square itself as well to Saturn. So now both Mercury and Mars are square Saturn. So this is adding an element of frustration, of limitation, of obstacles. Um, what would be an even better way of describing this? Like perhaps activating some some significant event in the overall story of the Mars-Saturn square. We may see that for many people on or around September 24th. But an even deeper level here is if my knowledge of medieval astrology serves me correctly, and I believe that it does, um, we have a configuration where Saturn would be said to be accepting the management of Mercury and Mars. And when a planet accepts the management, um, it acts as like a judge or mediator or messenger or something of this nature between two opposing parties. And so in this case, that would be uh, Mercury and Mars being the two opposing parties. And the reason I think this is very likely in this case, or extra likely, I should say, um, that this is like an authority figure who is helping to resolve some kind of a conflict um, is because Saturn is already associated with authority figures. So uh, that's even more probability that that is what we are seeing. Now... Um, what else is I going to say about that? Oh, yes, just that. Remember, of course, Saturn here is for you, Cancer, uh, in Capricorn, which is your seventh house of major relationships. And so it could be someone with whom you are in a major relationship 
that ends up resolving a conflict perhaps between yourself and someone or something else or even I could even see it manifesting in this way that this is not even a conflict that you are in but that people who are important to you are in and then someone with whom you're in a major relationship ends up resolving that conflict. So that's uh, perfectly possible as well. So uh, that is what we have there. And that brings us to the end of our forecast. So overall, it is true. The month of September is not an easy one uh, by any means. It's more difficult than August. That's for damn sure. Um, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you at all. I'm here to tell it to you like it is basically because I believe it is much better to go into these things with an awareness of the reality of the challenges that we face uh, so that we can then deal with them effectively rather than expecting them to be normal or expecting things to be normal or even worse just believing whatever we want to believe or just being told whatever we want to hear uh, because that is as always a recipe for disaster and so I'm here to tell you this is the energy as it is, navigate it as best you see fit. Um, but the one thing you don't want to do no matter what is be in denial of it. Now it all comes back to this Mars Saturn square, I would say, uh, where we are in this period of great frustration. Now this, again, is not a time where you want to just push forward with things. Being disciplined, being patient, being thorough, and restraining your desire to maybe push forward now will serve you well in the long run. You'll be better off in the long run if you can exercise restraint at this time and also hold yourself back from any uh, battles or heroic actions that you might want to take because you're not going to um, get very much out of that at this time when Mars is under uh, such wretched conditions. So ideally, wait until, well, ideally wait another five months or so <laughs> until this whole extended thing clears um, before you take those kinds of actions. So that is about it, Cancer. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe if you're not already, as I'm always creating more content like this. Also, despite these difficult astrological conditions, I do hope that you have as enjoyable of a month of September as possible. So thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.